Yeah, I'm okay. I just need a break. I wish we didn't have to wear these masks. It's hot, hard to breathe in, feels claustrophobic, and no one out there even looks human anymore. You don't know if they're smiling or scowling at you. So you're only left with their eyes. But their eyes avoid contact. It's as if they're afraid to look at you in fear of catching something. Look, I don't have it. So you can look at me, okay? Just look at me. Aren't we supposed to be in this together? Yeah. Well, you should try stocking groceries all day, where the mood is grim, the speech is mumbled, and the people are rushing in and out like little ants. Funny. They're afraid to come in here for more than 20 minutes, but I'm in here all day. Look, I don't have it, but if I dare walk past you, you push your cart away from me as fast as you can. Hey, I'm not going to breathe on you. Welcome to the weird world of COVID-19. People jump away from you, refuse eye contact, and if you study their eyes, look scared and lonely. Well, I'm done with this. I'm 16 and I have my entire life ahead of me. This is not living, this is running. There's more to me than being a city stacker at City Market. <laughs> this guy has dreams. And trust me, my dreams aren't stacking your groceries. I'm good, I'm good, just taking a break. At first, I tried smiling at people from underneath my mask. I'd say, have a blessed day. And if they'd say, what? What did you say? I'd repeat, have a blessed day. But no response. Maybe they heard me, maybe they didn't. So I'd carefully set their groceries in the back of their car and off they'd go. Fast, gotta get out of here and away from me as fast as they could. Shuffling back inside the store, I glance out of my watch and count the minutes until I can go home. I don't like it here anymore. People are distant and cold. But I'm not like that. I like to reach out and I like to touch someone's arm and say, have you tried those strawberries yet? They're fresh off the truck. They're amazing. Or I'd like to go up to those ladies at the booths with all the samples and they'd have chicken salad or lemon pie or barbecue and they couldn't refuse me. I'd smile and they'd give in. I'm also a hugger. Hey, it's okay. We'll find your mom. I bet she's just in the next aisle. Let's hug it out and go find her. But now, you have to keep your distance. Hey, don't be scared, but stay away. I'm sure we'll find your mom. So yeah, if I didn't need money for my car payment, I'd quit in a heartbeat. You know, that's one thing we all still have, a heartbeat. I mean, all of our hearts are still beating. So maybe if we can't touch each other, maybe we can put our hands on our hearts as if to say, I know you're scared, I know you're tired, but our hearts beat together. Yeah, I like that. Well, I can't wait for all this to be over. <laughs> maybe in a couple months, but I say that every couple of months. But can you imagine what it'll be like when it is over? Like my mom's Facebook says, the air we breathe will be sweeter, the hugs will be longer, and the laughter will be louder. Yeah, I'm coming. I'll be right there. But please, please don't turn away. Please, just look here. Look into my eyes as if to say, I know we're scared, but our hearts beat together. Yeah, you came. I didn't think you'd come, but I'm so glad you did. Just sit there in your old spot. It's still nice up here, isn't it? Just like when we were in the fourth grade. It's still sturdy too. Except for the ladder, it's a little rickety now, but my dad did a good job building this treehouse, didn't he? Remember how he begged him for it? Please, please, we need a special place for a girls club. A girls club of two, me and you. Layla and Mia to conquer the world. <laughs> Remember how we used to blow bubbles from up here for what seemed like forever? They watched them flow through the air and try to guess when they'd pop and scream when they did. I still have some here, here. 
be so covered with this slippery mess dripping all over our hands, but we didn't care. And we never, never fought. But then in junior year, we drifted. Different interests, new friends. You know, it wasn't you, it was me, but it was high school and where I turned on you. I mean, I didn't want to, but it seemed exciting, like a rush to be with this new group of popular girls. Tara, Megan, Ashley, we stuck together like glue, and they were my new girls club, and they demanded nothing but loyalty, and it's sad to say a sense of cruelty to anyone on the outside. Yeah, my new friends and I loved standing tall on that social ladder and kicking down any and all who tried to interfere. We made others cry, dared them to approach us, dared them to look at us, but you, you always dared to look at us. Actually, you looked right at me, right into my eyes, because you knew who I'd been when we were kids. You knew that girl who was by your side, laughing and blowing bubbles from this treehouse. Not the girl I'd become, and now I was a stranger to you. Not exactly, but close. But I didn't care. All I cared about was keeping my status quo. God, I remember the hurt in your eyes when I was with them and saw you looking our way. Hey, Mia, we saw you looking at us, so why don't you take notes? Follow our pattern if you want to grow up someday and be as awesome as we are. No, wait, Mia, I'm getting to it. Please, just listen. I wasn't awesome. I was the scum of the earth, and I know that now. Listen, this pandemic and the school closing has opened my eyes. Suddenly, thank God, I was forced to be away from them. And I, being away from them has given me time to sit here and think. And ask myself, who have I become? Who am I without that dirty squad to wreck and destroy others' lives? I'm a nobody, that's who. And nobody not even worth glancing at. Mia, I'm so sorry. Truly, truly sorry. And if I could take it all back, I know I can't, but if I could, I would do it, I swear. And listen, when we go back to school, I want you to know that I will never ever treat you that way again. I promise. But instead, I'll look at you, smile at you, and I'll say hi. I'll even invite you to have lunch with me. And no, I don't care, I don't care what other girls have to say. They're no longer my friends. I don't need friends like that. So thanks. Thanks for listening to me. Yeah, this place is always magical. Still is, and it's still ours, even if we're no longer friends. Oh, look at that one go. Wow, it still hasn't popped. Look, look, Mia. It's still going. Really? You're glad you came? Me too. Dad, I'm sorry we can't come to the hospital and visit you. I hate this. I know you hate it too, but don't worry. We're all doing good. Even Mom. She cleans a lot, you know, with bleach. Every surface, handle, doorknob. I think it helps her. Keeps her busy. And Timmy, he just plays if everything is normal. Running through the house in his Superman cape, jumping on the furniture, mom yelling at him to stop. He just doesn't understand. Dad, we can't wait for you to come home. And the minute you do, I'm making you your favorite dessert, lemon meringue pie. And hopefully it won't turn out the way it did last time. Remember? <laughs> on your birthday. It was supposed to be the crowning glory for my pie. Whipped clouds of pure delight it became a runny mess that spilled out all over the table. It was terrible. But you... You grabbed a spoon and ate it off the table like it wasn't even a big deal. You said, come on, everybody, grab a spoon. This is great. 
but it was a disaster. So here's what I'll do. Tonight, I'll practice making you the perfect pie. I'll watch some videos and practice whipping up that melt-in-your-mouth homemade meringue. I can do it. I know I can. Then I'll give you a tart and creamy lemon custard topped with mile-high, yes, mile-high billowy meringue. I'm sorry you don't feel like talking, but you look good. And it's good that they're giving you some oxygen. Mom said it's more concentrated oxygen, so it's good for your lungs. So relax and breathe in, Dad. Breathe in and imagine that lemon meringue pie I'm going to make for you the minute you come home. Just don't imagine that disaster last time. Practicing tonight. I'll be perfect, I promise. You'll see. Oh, hey, Dad. In a minute, Timmy wants to say hi to you. He <sighs> thinks you're on vacation. I guess that's just how his four-year-old brain works. Mom didn't want to upset him about you being in the hospital. So when he sits in front of the computer, you can just give him a thumbs up. Like this. Then I'll make him scream. Okay? That way you have to deal with his million zillion questions. Like, Dad, where are you? Are you having fun? When are you coming back? Can I come with you? You know, all that stuff. Sometimes Timmy drives me crazy with his million zillion questions. Like, what are you eating? Can I have some? Can you get me a juice? Can you put in my Spider-Man cup? Do you know Spider-Man can climb walls? <laughs> so I'll protect you from his million zillion questions. Oh, so tomorrow we're going to... Dad? Dad, what's that loud beeping noise? Why won't it stop? What's going on? Dad? Dad? Oh, good. I see a nurse next to you. What's she doing? Dad, are you okay? What's going on? Dad? Yes, I'm his daughter. What? His oxygen level went to low? Is he going to be okay? You promise. You promise he's going to be okay. No, Timmy, you can't talk to Dad right now. He's not feeling well. Oh, I, I mean, he, he's busy. Go, go find Mom. Hurry, tell her to come here. Go, Timmy, go. Dad, are you okay? Please, Dad, tell me you're okay, please. <sighs> Thanks, Dad. I needed that. Thumbs up. You're going to be just fine. Disappointed. That's my word. A form of sadness. A feeling of loss. A painful gap between expectation and reality. You know, teens want to do everything in life with exclamation points. But instead, we're mourning the memories we were looking forward to. Prom, awards programs, signing yearbooks. Oh, and this little tradition I was looking forward to on the last day of school. When the bell rings, last hour, last day of school, Everyone runs into the hallways, tears all the paper out of their notebooks, and throws it in the air. Paper falls to the ground everywhere, like snow. Masses of snow. <laughs> the teachers don't even get mad. They probably did it too. It's tradition. I suppose the only person who doesn't like it is the janitor. But I heard the principal stays late to help him sweep up all the paper. <laughs> it's a tradition. You know... I want to be happy, but it's hard. I miss school, I miss my friends, and I miss my favorite teacher, Mrs. Shepard. I wanna walk into her classroom and see her smiling. She's always smiling. Bonjour, she says. Comment allez-vous, how are you? Je suis bon, I respond. I'm good, except for not today. Trees. Sad. Mrs. Shepard's one of those teachers everyone loves. Even if you don't want to be taking French, you take her class just so you can be in her class. She's funny and kind and gives lots of hugs. Yeah, lots of hugs. I could use one of those hugs right now. Anyways, so this is something funny. During the last pep assembly, Mrs. Shepard walked out into the middle of the gym and no one knew what was going on or what she was doing. Then suddenly, this song, Watch Me, started playing. You know that song. Everyone knows that song. Well, she was standing in the middle of the gymnasium doing the Whip and Nene dance. It was hilarious. 
Everyone was on their feet, screaming, cheering, clapping. And she was a good dancer. <laughs> it was amazing. Yeah, Mrs. Shepard makes everyone happy. Like I said, I miss her class. The online instructions, well, they're just not the same. We don't even get to see her face. Just a list of assignments. No smiles, no laughs, and no hugs. Gosh, I wish I could talk to her. She always makes me feel better, but, you know, I do have her number. She gives it to all of her students. That's just the type of teacher she is. But I wonder if anyone ever calls her. What would we say? She said we could, any time. But saying, I'm just calling because I miss you. I don't know. It feels lame. It's not like I need help with any assignments. We finished everything. All done. No more writing in journals, practicing with flashcards, listening assignments. Besides, she's probably busy with her family. So how is it that one person can, one teacher can make your whole world feel, I don't know, hopeful? I remember one time and she stopped me in the hall and asked if everything was okay. She must be really observant because she could tell something was off just by looking at me. I just nodded my head and said everything was fine. But then these stupid tears started to roll down my face. I told her about how me and Mason got in this big fight and we broke up. Then she looked at me with the most warm look I'd ever seen and put her hand on my face. Then she said something to me that I'll never forget. Painful endings mean new beginnings. And she was right. Breaking up with Mason was a good thing. But missing Mrs. Shepard? Not a good thing. Hi, Mrs. Shepard. Yeah, yeah, it's me, Isabel. I'm good, good. Je suis bonne. I'm good. I was just wondering how you were, and... I miss you, too. Yeah, it's all so crazy right now. I can't wait to get back to school. Yeah. Oh, no, I didn't get it. I'll go check the mail as soon as we hang up. No, I'm glad you wrote it in French. I will. I'll write back tonight. <laughs> in French, I promise. Yes, and every week until I'm back in your classroom. Perfect. Au revoir. Goodbye. Dawn. That's my word. That's what I have to look forward to. The appearance of light. The morning sun. A new start. And as Mrs. Shepard said, painful endings mean new beginnings. I like- Go get it, boy! Feels nice to be outside. I guess I have been cramped up in my room too long. Need some fresh air. Even though I'm not supposed to be doing this. No. I'm supposed to be cleaning my room because mom thinks it looks like a pig pen. So what? It's my room. Good job, Harvey. Good job. Go get it! Well, get this. Last night, I heard Dad talking to Mom, and he said, Beth, you need to learn to pick your battles. I'm thinking, yeah, you tell her, Dad, because my room is off limits. And then he says, there are more important things going on in the world right now. Yeah, like a pandemic? And you're worried about my room being a little messy? It's not that big of a deal. Good boy, good boy. Go get it! Well, despite what Dad said, Mom picked the battle. And this morning, I'm fast asleep. And then all of a sudden, Mom shoves open the door, flips off the lights, opens the blinds. I'm like, Mom, what are you doing? Well, even half asleep, I knew what was going on. I knew this day was coming. She says, Phoenix, I've had it up to here with you in your messy room. 
I'm like, Mom, really? So I roll over and try and go back to sleep. And that doesn't stop her. Get up and get started cleaning your room right now. And don't come out till it's done. Lucky for me, Mom had to leave the house. She shouldn't be back for a couple more hours. Yeah, supposed to be cleaning my room. But what am I doing? I'm playing ball with a dog. Good job, Harvey. Good job. Go get it. What can I say? I'm a rebellious teen. I don't like being told what to do. I'm my own person. But in my defense, she did say, And you spend too much time in your room. Go out and get some fresh air. Well, look at me, Mom. I'm out. I'm getting some fresh air. <sighs> Good job, Harvey. Good boy. Go get it. I don't know. I wish I could go outside and hang with friends, but I can't. And I wish this stupid stay-at-home order would just go away. Don't we all? But look, while the average five-year-old enjoys uninterrupted time with mommy and daddy, teens are different. We need our own space. And my room is my space. You don't see me going into her room and telling her how to keep it. Mom, don't you think you need a dust over here? Because I don't care. You don't care, do you, boy? No, you don't. You don't care if my room's a little messy. But Mom does. Just like when I was five, and she told me to put away the toys for the night. Why? Why not just leave him out for the morning? Nope. It's all about the big R. Responsibility. I'm not raising my son to be a drain on society. Yeah, here we go again. I guess I have some dirty plates. Maybe some food containers. Cups. Candy wrappers. Clothes. Silverware. And, and who knows what else. I guess she shouldn't have to clean it up. I guess it is my mess. But it's my room. So, yeah. I showed her, didn't I, Harvey? I'm not cleaning up my room. Come on, Harvey. You wanna help me clean up my room? I'll let you lick some dirty plates. Stay inside and hope for the day life returns to normal. But it'll be too late. The one act play competition has been suspended. They might as well say cancel because it's not going to happen. Ever. I have all the lines memorized. All for nothing. The part I dreamed of. The part I prayed for. The auditions I put my heart and soul into. Yeah, auditions were tough. Every girl trying out wanted this part and somehow I got it. I still remember the day I posted the cast list outside the drama room. Mr. Wilson has this tradition of posting it as soon as the last bell rings. Then he disappears. I guess it's because he doesn't want to hear any outbursts of joy or disappointment. So there I was, standing at the very back behind everyone else who had rushed in to see if their name was on the list. Did I get in? Did I get in? They'd ask, searching the cast list. I heard shouts of joy and saw heads drop and walk away. I couldn't see the list from where I was standing. I was too far back. I waited my turn for what seemed like forever. My heart was beating pretty fast. Excited! and scared mostly scared before i could squeeze through the packed shoulders i started hearing congratulations peyton not just once but several times 
At this point, I knew I would knew I would stay in, but what part? Then suddenly, Becca grabbed my arm and said, "You got it! You got it! You got the lead!" I did. Really? Is this a dream? I did. I was so excited. I ran home as fast as I could to tell my mom, Mom, I got it, I got it. And if we put together a great show, we could go to state and I could have a chance at the Best Actress Award. Can you imagine? That evening, I read every line with such passion. The pillow on my bed was my Romeo and I confessed my undying love to him. Good night, good night. Parting is such sweet sorrow that I shall say good night till it be morrow. I was on top of the world, calling out to my star-crossed lover, knowing that we'd seize the attention of the audiences and most important, the judges. Oh, Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo? Deny thy father and refuse thy name, or if thou wilt not, be but sworn my love, and I'll no longer be a Capulet. Noah got the part of Romeo. Get this. This is huge. I have this humongous crush on him. Can we say win-win? And in my mind, as I'm memorizing my lines, looking at the propped up pillow on my bed, he will truly, in real life, become my star-crossed lover. But soft, what light through yonder window breaks. It is the east and Juliet is the sun. Arise, fair sun, and kill the envious moon, who is already sick and pale with grief, that thou, her maid, art far more fair than she. Noah is a senior and all the girls adore him. I do too, from afar, but I'm new to this town, new to this school, new to everyone. I've made a few friends who I hang out with, but I wouldn't call us the popular girls, not like the people Noah hangs out with. But he's never had the chance to get to know me, and doing this play, he was going to get to know me. The sophomore from who knows where, who swept in and snagged the role of Juliet. Who is she? Where is she from? She is not a senior. Nope, but I got it. I put my heart into those tryouts and I guess Mr. Wilson saw something he liked. Maybe he saw the chemistry between me and Noah star-crossed lovers on stage and maybe in real life too. <sighs> if only. And there you go. No Romeo. No traveling to state. No chance of getting the Best Actress Award. And no chance of Noah getting to know me. On stage or in real life. I'll probably never see him again. He goes off to college next year and I stay here in my room, dreaming, pretending you are my Romeo. Oh, Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo? Um, who is this? It's Noah. Noah. Noah? Noah's texting me! Um, hi! I was just wishing... No, um, I was feeling sad. No. How's it going? I was thinking about you too. Sure, you can call me after dinner. Okay. Bye! My bounty is as boundless as the sea, my love as deep. The more I give to thee, the more I have, for both are infinite. I always liked feeding you. Mom used to take me to the park almost every weekend when I was a little kid. At first I was scared of you, 
I thought you were going to bite me, so I ran away and I'd hide behind a tree. Mom would stand there, laughing, and feed you while I watched. She would talk to you, too, like I'm talking to you now. But finally, I figured out you weren't going to hurt me. Maybe a little peck here or there because you got too anxious for the bread, but it never hurt. Now, this is how I relax. Earlier, Mom and I had this big fight, and I don't know. I said some things I didn't mean. I mean, I was mean. You can't control me. You can't make me stay here. I'm sick of this house, and I'm sick of these walls, and I'm sick of you. So I'm leaving. Do you hear me? I'm leaving, and you can't stop me. I'm leaving. I went to my room, and I slammed the door. I thought, I'm just going to grab some things, you know, pack a bag, and leave. I'll sleep in the park if I have to. What's she going to do? Call the police? Get me arrested for going to the park? Then I hear this... Tap, tap, tap. Morgan, can I come in? No, go away, I'm busy. I wanted her to think I was packing my bag. I even opened and closed drawers to make it sound that way. I know she was standing outside listening. I felt ashamed, but yet I wanted to leave. So I grabbed my backpack, threw a few things inside of it, and walked into the living room. Mom gave me a defeated look. I knew she was tired of fighting. I was too. But we had this kind of stare. No words, just staring. I'm almost daring her to stop me from walking out that door, and she's pleading with her eyes. Please, don't go. My independent nature is screaming. Do it! Show her! She can't boss you around. No one can! Then, all of a sudden, I had this vision. I saw my mom standing in the park with ducks circling her. They were quacking. <laughs> she was laughing. And I was standing behind that big elm tree. Come on, Morgan, she said. Don't be scared. They won't hurt you. Yeah, I, I hurt my mom. I could see it in her eyes. I tossed my backpack to the couch and said, I want to go feed the ducks. She nodded and didn't say a word. Within a couple seconds, she had the car keys in one hand and a loaf of bread in the other. We didn't say one word on the drive over here. Silence. When she parked on the street, I grabbed the loaf of bread and came straight here. She's just sitting there, waiting. I mean, I'm glad she's giving me some space. I need it. Because ever since I quit hiding behind that elm tree, this has been my hiding place. The park, the ducks. The memories of all those times my mom brought me here. It's comforting and makes me feel at peace. And now, well, now I feel bad. I don't like the way things are now. I want things to go back to normal, whatever that is, but here, I feel normal. Oh, hey little one back there, are you hungry? You guys are always snatching up all the food. Here you go. I bet you're glad you don't have to be in quarantine. I mean, you can swim all around the pond all day long, go wherever you want, hang out with your friends, but I guess if I could leave this place, I wouldn't. And neither would you. Home is nice, comforting, safe. But I mean, I do miss my friends. Mom said it won't be like this forever, but there is one thing I hope never changes. Coming here, feeding you guys. Even before I was big enough to walk, Mom would push me in the stroller to see you. Then I hid. Now I'm not scared at all. <sighs> okay guys, I guess I'll be going. I have some apologies to make. And don't worry, I'll be back soon. Thank you.